फाइव सेकेंड्स एक्सेलेंसीज लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट इज ए प्रिविलेज फॉर मी एंड दी गवर्नमेंट एज वेल एज आवर पीपल टू वेलकम यू टू आवर कैपिटल वाट ब्रिंग्स एज टूगेदर इज मैन काइंड हाइएस्ट काज टूडे आर एवर we represent not only our own peoples but also peace which embraces all continents and countries in the earlier great experiment was launched in the hope that the thought of war can be abolished from the minds of people and that was the creation of the united nations immediately after the nuclear bombs were dropped the united nations charter could not refer to nuclear weapons but the general assembly has declared that the use of such weapons is a crime against humanity it is true that no nuclear weapons have been actually used since then the persons who favored the theory of balance of terror take credit for this but it is at best an unstable peace production of nuclear weapons is going on they are becoming more sophisticated each improvement in accuracy makes present agreements so much more delicate existing agreements deny the right to conduct experiments to non nuclear weapons states while placing no control on the nuclear weapons power in the matter of multiplying their military stores this is a discrimination to which we have objected much is made of the danger of horizontal growth but the dangers of present stockpiles their vertical growth and the risk of destruction by error or design are overlooked how can one nation or five nations can be considered more responsible than the rest basic problems of sovereignty and human survival are involved the two great powers have recently agreed to resume discussions on nuclear weapons this is a good development and we welcome it these negotiations must ultimately address themselves to the basic objective that is the elimination of all nuclear weapons credible and reassuring first steps would be a freeze on further production and development of nuclear weapons these steps have to be followed by the physical reduction of stockpiles by the nuclear weapons powers furthermore discussions and agreements must apply to all countries possessing nuclear weapons otherwise the peril remains open the actual prospect of nuclear weapons being used remains where national security is based on stability through extended inhibition or through the building up of opposing capabilities or multi layered network of defense systems every refinement of inhibition assumes that the use of these weapons can be controlled by increasing their sophistication the qualitative arms race is thus built into the arms control approach that kind of arms control is in reality no control at all the dangers have increased due to computer errors system failures accidents and misjudgments at lower levels to which responsibility has been delegated besides there is the new danger of nuclear terrorism and blackmail sophisticated weapons are being transferred not only between members of military alliances but also outside global justifications are advanced this leads to several tensions which are bound to result in physical conflict this is not a mere speculation it has immediate relevance to the situation in our region arms race and international tension are inseparable companions over the years there has been a heightening of tension all over the world there is a rise in proxy wars and many regions are affected by this therefore along with the dialogue between the major powers there must also be a genuine effort not to view all relationships in terms of the global balance and influential spheres military spending is rapidly nearing 1000 billion dollars annually it continues to rise while the world economy swings with uncertainty this vast military expenditure has increased the problems of global economic recovery and development many developing countries face the prospect of economic collapse and social upheaval technological advances are widening economic disparities among nations the policies of powerful governments are building up tensions which deteriorate good relations among the countries force cannot find answers to these problems vision and statesmanship demand constructive measures to reduce and remove disparities and ensure a better life for all a new and unfortunate development is the undermining of various agencies in the united nations system these agencies have played a notable part in assisting poorer countries in the last four decades 
if they are weakened the ideals of the united nations which are indeed the very basis of international cooperation would be shaken a campaign has to be launched in the capitals of the world to reverse this unfortunate trend the threat of first strike is being used now to justify new kinds of arms races the probability of climatic disaster renders the first strike meaningless the nuclear winter assumption which is being increasingly accepted under, underlines the invisibility of peace and the urgency of disarmament another matter of concern is the idea of deep strike according to which conventional weapons could be used for striking at targets up to 300 kilometers it is claimed that this would lessen the resort to nuclear weapons the delivery systems for the conventional deep strike weapons are not distinguishable from those of nuclear weapons by masking the difference between nuclear and conventional weapons the possibility of a nuclear war is increased the control of nuclear arms is made more difficult last year we had called upon nuclear weapons powers to halt the arms race and cease the testing production and deployment of nuclear weapons it was endorsed by many parliaments and national groups and evoked positive response from the nuclear weapons power today we also ask the powerful to prevent an arms race in outer space and to start an a treaty to ban the testing of all nuclear weapons it was mentioned that the united nations charter gave the right to every nation to defend itself we are gathered here today defending ourselves not with weapons but with words we will not defend ourselves with war we will defend ourselves by building a public opinion against war the survival of the human race depends on the demilitarization of the global surface and on keeping outer space free of weapons we must strengthen the defenses of peace in man's inner space as well as that in his mind soul and spirit let us work to strengthen humanity's faith in itself and its capacity to conquer the peril which has come out of its own technological advancements